Hello everyone, my name is Skalti, and today we're going to be going over the construction of Tier 1 Copper Components at 100% efficiency for all your future factory building needs. I have made a guide on this before, going over the general layout, but this time, as you can see, we put it into its own standalone or permanent structure for long-term use. I hope you enjoy. Alright, before we get this build started, let's go ahead and go over what we're going to need for this factory. We're going to need an MK1 miner at the very least, 4 smelters, 8 constructors, and 6 storage containers. You may need up to 4 MK1 miners depending on the node purity you're using. You just want to make sure that you have 120 ore coming into the system. And in terms of the power you're going to need for this, it'll be at least 53 megawatts with a maximum of 68 should you be using 4 MK1 miners. The foundational space area that you're going to want to set aside for this system is 8 by 5 and the primary footprint will be this 3 by 6 area here. These 6 white foundations will be where the storage containers are located and then these 9 black foundations are going to be where the smelters will be placed. So to start off with the beginning of the factory, we have an MK1 miner on top of a pure copper node with an MK2 belt line coming off of it and you can see that it's currently being routed underneath the ground floor of our factory so that way the navigational area is kept nice and clean. So we have it coming underneath up this lift here in the center or middle area contained within this 3x3 three three foundational space and what we're going to do is place some walls to hide away all of the belt work and the load balancing but before we place those walls we want to put in the wall conveyors in a particular location on these corners on the exterior long edge here and this is uh, pertinent based on how the smelters will need to be facing in order to get some belt work sorted out later in the system so once we have all of those in place, all you need to do is put in regular walls everywhere else containing this area. And then we just need to load balance this 120 ore coming in. So we'll split it off into two lines of 60 and then into four lines of 30. Get this all connected here. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, everything's all connected. Make sure you put an MK2 miner or uh, an MK2 belt in here. There's been a few times where I put in an MK1 miner and I'm like, what's going on, mate? So, we have all that belted up. We can just go ahead and close in this space with some 8x1 foundations, like so. And then for the smelters, Go ahead and place these over the wall conveyors here and when we place these you want to make sure that they're hanging over just by a little bit as you can see here so that way when it comes to placing our lift you can hear the beep this means it's snapping to the belts below and therefore we don't need any additional belt work to get them all connected so just go ahead and get these in place here Oop. just like that. Now for the output from these smelters, what we're going to want are three different lines. We're going to have two lines of 30 and then one line of 60. And we want these two smelters in particular, essentially on the back edge. I'm going to call this the front where we have our storage. So this would be the back two smelters. We want this line to merge together into one line of 60 and we want that merger to be facing toward the inside toward this central foundation right here and what we're going to be doing is creating a column using our walls to bring our belt work up but hidden away so for this single line of 60 we'll do a single conveyor wall here and then for these two smelters we want them on their own lines of 30. Now I'd like to add in 
a window here and here so that way we can kind of see all these items going up the lifts if you want by all means just use a solid wall so you can't see anything I'll go ahead and place two more here and then the rest will be normal walls all the way up and you want three walls on each side just like that so let's go ahead and get these belts in place And that'll give us our belting up to the second floor. And for that, we're going to go ahead and build our sandwich layer. And by that, we're we're, what we're going to do is take an 8x4 foundation and build it up next to the tower. And then once more on top. And then next to this, we're going to take four 8x1 foundations and build them so that way they match the height of this one here. And then we can go ahead and delete out the two in the middle and now you can see we have the top part of our sandwich and the bottom part. And now we want to go ahead and build this out to match the space below without covering our column here. And by the space below I mean the 6x3 foundation space that we have here. And for now I'm going to leave the top part of the sandwich uncovered so that way we can do the belt work down in here. So again we're going to take our two wall conveyor and our one wall and bring it up like that and then we'll do normal walls use our lifts bringing these up just like that and now we can go ahead and close that in Now for the constructor placement on top, I'm not going to place them yet, but I'm going to go over where they're going to be located. So we need three constructors for our copper sheets, and those will be going here. And then we're going to need four in total for our wire. So we're going to take the central two foundations here on each of the long sides and place our constructors like so. But we don't want to place those yet. We want to get our walls in place. So what we're going to do is take the two wall conveyor, I'm sorry, the single wall conveyor and place those for those two constructors there and then we can just do normal walls and then over here the single wall normal, normal, single, single just like that. Let's go ahead and get our constructors in place now. The reason why it's beneficial to put the walls in place first is because based on how the constructors sit on top of this foundation here we can't put the walls on top and then below we have to build them off to the side and it's just like a little tedious to deal with so and like our smelters below you want to make sure that these constructors are hanging off by just one step these little legs are hanging off and then get them built it up like so and now we can do our bell work down in the middle of the sandwich layer and so this is why we place the smelters in the way we did down below and we have two lines coming up here so this line will come up to split into two lines of 15 for the wire this one here for those two lines and the single line of 60 into these three here for the copper sheets And when you're placing the belt work in here, based on the vertical clearance that we have, it's highly recommended that you build your way out. So wherever the exit is, or the entrance, depending on how you look at it, you want to build as far away from that as you can. So that way, when you're placing all of this, the last belt you put in will not be between you and your exit. So that way we can just leave simply. So now we can go ahead and seal this all up. And 
our second floor is pretty much complete. So we have seven of the eight constructors built that we're going to need. And for the eighth one, which is going to be making our cable, before I place that, I wanted to go over the thought process real quick. So we have our storage containers here on these six foundations below. So I figured we'll have wire, and then wire makes cable, and then we'll have the copper sheets. So to keep, keep the cable in line, we'll just take a single constructor here and bring it to the edge like we do with the smelters below so that way the output these little legs here are hanging off the edge just by a little bit. Now to get this all belted up we can go ahead and merge these back three constructors into one line and then go ahead and place a lift here for now. I'm going to go ahead and leave that and then for these four constructors here, we just need to merge them up, like so. So these two, for our wire, we'll just bring these off to the left here. And run this all the way to the edge. We'll take this line and bring it in for our cable. And then to bring our copper sheets up front, what we're going to want to do is on this little joiner here between these two foundations, we're going to go ahead and take a conveyor pole, bring it over once and twice, go ahead and get that placed. But before we place the lift, we want to make sure that we have a belt running off of this to the edge here. So that way when we build the lift, it's going to be going in the correct direction turn it around and then just bring it all the way up just like that. So now we have all of our outputs going to where they need to be. So now we just got to do, all we have to do is bring them down below to our storage. And for that we will take these and bring them not directly to the edge where you see the white outline that is the hitbox of the container. If it's located here, we won't be able to place our walls to hide these away. So we want to bring it one step back and then just build it over two more times and then turn them around like so. And then we'll take our walls, we'll do wall conveyors on the bottom and then again here and then we can do normal fill in the gap just like that. Same thing over here, we can just do normal. And then same thing on the back here. And if you ever want to maybe go in, I'd suggest maybe putting in a door at the very least so that way you don't have to constantly, you know, delete a wall and then go in and put the wall back, etc. Like so. And then get these all closed in as well. And go ahead and bring our outputs down. Go to the inside through our door here. these all connected up. Whoops. Connect these together so that way the items flow down. Don't forget to connect this one. And so this way, when items fill up the container, they will come out onto this belt. So this way you can visibly see what is inside each container and you still have access to open the container up to acquire any items contained within. So that's pretty much build complete. All we need to do now is get some electricity to all these machines, get some walls on this, and then we can call it a day. So that's what we go ahead and do. See you on the other side.
Alright, and that completes our build. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found some value in this guide. If you did, feel free to leave a like. It really helps out the channel. And if you want to see more content in the future, be sure to subscribe. And if you have any questions or if there's something you want to see specifically in the future, leave a comment below and I'll see what I can do. Additionally, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter to discuss any of these builds if you have any technical questions that are more lengthy in conversation. Also, I do post some behind the scenes work on my Instagram account and also some design tips and whatnots and also teasers for these guides. So if you want to get a heads up on when these are going to be coming out, go ahead and give me a follow on there as well. But with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. Thank you guys again for watching. Take care.